All right, let's finish up section two five, which was piecewise functions. So we can also um, do some weird absolute value graphs. So if we don't remember the absolute value of x is equal to x when x is greater than zero or equal because zero is just zero or negative x when x is less than zero. So we're gonna kind of take that approach with this one. It's a little trickier and so graphing actually makes it easier as weird as that is. So this function is the absolute value of x squared plus two x. Uh, it's going to equal x squared plus two x when that whole statement is bigger than zero. Which is a little tricky. I ran out of space, I'm gonna move it over here. And so I don't really feel like solving that right now. And then it equals negative x squared plus two x when that statement's less than zero. We know how to solve that. Um, we learned that in section one one, but it's gonna be a little bit faster graphing wise and I'll show you why in a second. So let's go ahead and graph it. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna graph the quadratic like normal and then worry about the absolute value. So let's just graph y equals x squared plus 2x, and then we'll see what that absolute value does. So let's see, um, what do we need to know? We need to know maybe an intercept, we could plug in zero. So that would be zero, zero. Um, we could factor y equals x, x plus two. And so then we could solve for the x-intercepts by plugging in zero for y. So it looks like we get zero and negative two, which we already found zero, zero. Negative two. So zero, zero, and negative two, zero. Um, and that pretty much gives us a par parabola if we're comfortable with them. I would probably add the vertex just for a little bit more. So I like to find the intercepts in the vertex. So if we don't remember, the vertex was negative b over 2a. Um, in this example, b is 2 and a is 1. So negative two over two times one, so negative one. And then we just plug in to find the y value. Um, negative one squared plus two times negative one. I think that's negative one. So we'll get this point down here. So I'm gonna draw the entire parabola. You can always make a table and add more points if you need to, right? Make those x, y tables. You can always add more points. So this is the graph of y equals x squared plus 2x. And so the way the absolute value works, ah, x squared plus 2x. So if we want to do the absolute value, all we really have to do is reflect the negative portions. So that would be this part. And I just reflect it, oops. And that's the graph of an absolute value, right? It has to always be positive. So it'll always be on the upper half. So basically anything in the negative portion um, for y is gonna be reflected because the y's need to be positive. So reflect the negative parts about the x-axis. And this will help us write the piecewise function because now we have a visual of it. So basically, this part that I wrote here, now we know the wins without solving that inequality. So it looks like it equals the positive curve or the pink curve when x is bigger than 0, remember that was 0, and when s, x is less than negative 2. And then it looked like it was that reflected portion in between, because that's the part that we, we flipped. 
So when x is in between, oops, negative 2 and 0. So you could have solved the inequality, but by graphing and just visually looking when it's positive and negative, um, we can just visually find them. And that's the graph of an absolute value. There should be absolutely no curve below the x-axis. So nothing should show up down here because when we have an absolute value, right, the output is always positive. All right, and let's just do one final example going backwards. So now we have a graph, a piecewise defined function with a graph on the side, and we want to find um, the function. So it looks like the first piece, I'm just going to go from left to right, is a parabola. Endpoint is included. It looks like that endpoint is 1. And it looks like it's just the traditional x squared parabola. It goes through 0, 0. It goes through 1, 1. So the blue piece would be y equals x squared, and it looks like it's only true when x is less than or equal to 1. The next piece looks like it goes from 1 to 2. Uh, I'm going to include the 2 because of the closed circle. I'm not going to include the 1. And then it's a horizontal line. What kind of curve is a horizontal line? It's just y equals a number. So what number would that be? Looks like 3, so y equals 3. And then we have one more piece when x is bigger than 2. Open circle, so I'm not including the 2. And it looks like a line, so let's try to find that equation. So what I might do to help with the equation is draw the line so I can find the y-intercept. So it looks like the y-intercept is 0. So b equals 0, and then the slope is 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. So my line would just be y equals x. So drawing the whole curve sometimes can help you figure out the equation better. And let's just go ahead and write it as a piecewise function now. So f of x, we have three pieces, so we're going to use that little brace thing. x squared if x is less than or equal to 1. 3 if x is in between 1 and 2, 2 is included, and then x if x is bigger than 2. And that's how you find a piecewise function. So this one had three pieces because visually we had three pieces, so the function has three pieces. And that is the end of piecewise functions for now. We'll see them pop up again.